Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Thank you very much for joining us. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, if you can kindly like, share, uh, even subscribe, come aboard on a daily, uh, daily basis, we really uh, appreciate it and get notified when we upload uh, new content. So let's talk about the market. So last week, uh, NASDAQ got hit for 3.2%. Uh, uh, the S&P got hit uh, for 2.5%. Uh, Dow survived a little bit, if you can say that, 1.6%. Uh, the question was what was going to happen at the start of this week. Now we're kind of slowly but surely starting to get a little bit numb, uh, a little bit a little bit more passive in absorbing information about the Middle East uh, conflict. And like we said, even two weeks ago, eventually... Uh, that is going to happen. That's exactly what's happening now. Because again, if you if you actually broke down headline by headline, it's actually horrific. And if this was the first two days, the market would just be go, literally going up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, and I find that the action very, very orderly. Uh, they've been really respecting levels. Um, and you can see here, just from the cues, you can see here, we lost the 50-day. Uh, we traded down to the 50-day EMA. We lost the 50-day EMA, traded down to the 100-day EMA. We lost the 100-day moving average. And if you guys remember, uh, it started out very innocently. We lost to the 364 level. Then going into last week, we talked about the importance of 359. We lost 359. And going into today's session, we talk about there was a high probability that we were going to have a soft landing, get to 351. That's exactly what happened, right? That's exactly what happened. That's what I mean. Somebody asked me, on uh, Twitter today, what do I mean by orderly? That's what I mean by orderly. Every single level is being uh, is being respected, right? It's being respected and orderly. They're coming down to each single level, respecting it, and kind of either bouncing or going through. And that's what we're seeing exactly. So if you watch the weekend update, we talked about a potential soft landing at 351. Look at today's low, 351, which is now the double bottom from the September lows. Again, we'll get to the significance in a second. When you look at the SPYs, not exactly the same story, right? We lost the 200-day moving average on Friday, and this is now the second close below the 200-day moving average in a row. That's not a good thing. Uh, let's look at the IWM. The IWM has been uh, everybody's favorite whipping boy. Uh, if you are a small cap or mid-cap trader uh, and you fall into this category, you can see there has been no law for you for a very, very long time going all the way back to the September when it lost the 50-day moving average, and it's not even come close to reclaiming it, the difference between the NASDAQ and all the, you know, a lot of the uh, smaller venues. Uh, again, IWM is just in the toilets. It's getting absolutely destroyed here. And not least but not least, to last but not least, uh, you have the diamonds, right? The diamonds uh, cannot, you know, do anything. The Dow is down another 200 points today. Uh, ever since we lost the 50-day moving average has been absolutely hell. And again, when you look at the market, you know, Main Street America calls the Dow Jones, the industrial average, the market. We all know it's it's 30 stocks, right? 30 stocks can now comprise the market. S&P NASDAQ 100 is a bigger, broader uh, view of what the market is. Uh, but for this point of conversation, the Dow Jones, again, cannot get out of its own way. And we are now looking at the diamonds uh, this 328 level is going to be kind of do or die for the next leg down. So where are we, right? Where are we? Uh, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about some names and we'll kind of get a reflection point of where we need. Number one, let's start off with the Qs, right? So the QQQs has done everything we talked about now in the last week. Every single level has been embraced. Every level has been tested. Every level has been broken. And now we have the ultimate, the absolute ultimate line in the sand. Guys, set and alert. It doesn't have to get there tomorrow. Like I always talk about the same thing with the video. We'll get to the video in a second. It doesn't have to get there tomorrow. Okay. It doesn't have to get there ever. Okay. But at least, like I say in every single video, be prepared. If you're not prepared for that level, you'll be always, uh, you know, be always looking for that license plate of the truck they ran you over. Levels are there for a reason. Technical analysis works. It works incredibly well. And this is why we don't randomly buy or sell stocks. We wait for a very, very specific channels and we wait for them to confirm. So write down this channel, okay? 
351 is going to be the line in the sand. It's not room for interpretation. It's not an open forum to have a conversation with somebody else to debate. You're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. No, 351 is the line in the sand. That was the September lows. That is today's lows. And that was the only reason that we bounced today, right? So 351, line in the sand, any close below 351. And I give you my word, you're not going to want to be long uh, the market at least that day when it finally loses 351. Because if you get, if you believe in orderly, right? Orderly organic moves, then 351. And here is your next pot of gold. We're talking about 339, 337 on the queues. This could really start a violent cycle. Again, I'm, I'm not there to fear monger anybody. This is just the truth, right? Again, I trade from both sides of the market. I trade day by day. Everybody in uh, the access to trader platform, that's what we do. We trade from day to day, both sides of the market. Uh, unfortunately, we can't control the market. Uh, we can't control the economy. We can only look for data, take control of that data and trade off that data. So 351 going forward is going to be a major, major level. And if you look at uh, a lot of the names today, you'll get a sense of what's going on. Number one, although we did bounce and it was a hell of a bounce, do not get me wrong. It was a, it was a hell of a bounce off that 351 level. If you look at the chart, what's the common denominator? What's been the common denominator since we gassed out at 373? We put in another, right? Lower high, right? So here's a high, lower 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 high. Despite today's bounce, we put in another lower high. The previous day's high was 360. Today's high was 359. That is another lower high. So again, be very, very aware. Is it possible, like we say all the time, even in the worst conditions, is it possible to get one, two days of buying? Sure. Again, that's the whole point. Uh, in 2022, when we had a bear market down 30%, right? We had two, three, four days of rally. So any potential multi-day balance is, is what it is. But until they start taking out the previous day's highs and start building above those previous day's highs, these are all deemed, right? They're all deemed uh, to be dead cat balances until we start reclaiming at least moderate major levels. So that's a very important. Again, 351 in the sand. And if you look at the majority of stocks within that group, you'll notice exactly the same thing, right? We'll get to the pivots in a second, but look at Tesla, right? Look at Tesla. Tesla, we talked about, needed to reclaim back three, uh, uh, 214. It tried that twice today, couldn't do it. What's the common denominator? High, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, right? Second close below the 200-day moving average. We saw today uh, buyers come in for the November 190, 185, and 180 puts, guys. Again, this is just this is just betting that's on the tape. You can see it for yourself. And again, the longer it stays below the 200-day moving average, the higher probability you're going to see high lower prices. Again, is it possible tomorrow it reclaims Friday's channel and gives a one or two day bounce? Absolutely. I would actually like it. Okay. I, I would actually like it just because again, you don't need a market to go straight down and straight up. You need some sort of, you know, you need some sort of rest. You need some sort of uh, action sequences that are just digesting. And that's what it is. But again, you have to be prepared on both sides of the market. As of right now, we are closing for the second day below uh, the 200 day moving average. Look at AMD, right? AMD could not rally at all here. Here, at least we saw some names uh, try to uh, try to at least put in a dead cap balance. It couldn't do so. We talked about it uh, over the weekend update. There was a little channel here. It traded to, back to the 200 day moving average. Again, that's going to be a major line in the sand. Look at a name like Amazon, right? Again, what's the common denominator? Lower highs, lower highs, lower lows. That's the whole point. So you, you kind of get a sense here, okay? You, you kind of get a sense here. Look at Apple, right? Look at Apple, same thing. Look at Apple, lower lows, lower highs. And the only thing that saved Apple today was that 351 bounce. So the moral of the story is, yes, we're not in a swing trading permeable market. We're in a trading environment. We're in a very aggressive trading environment. And this is an environment that if you don't know your, le your, your levels, you're going to be fish food. It's just the reality. So it's very, very important that you knew that 351 was a major bounce area, right? It was a major support that was probably going to test and probably going to be defended the first time around. That's what happened today. You have to know the dynamics of where the stocks are. The fact that we're continuously putting in lower highs and lower lows, the majority of the names, even on a dead cat bounce scenario, is not a good thing, guys. So we have to, for the bull's sake, they need to start taking out at least the previous day's channel and start building there for at least a multiple day uh, move up. But so far, uh, we are not uh, getting that. 
Um, maybe that changes tomorrow, right? Maybe changes tomorrow. Today, nothing really big as far as uh, earnings go. Tomorrow, we have uh, Google. We got Microsoft. We got Snapchat, which again, if you've watched Snapchat uh, in the last uh, several quarters, does it know it's dead, right? The, the, like, the, right? Like, the, does it know it's dead? I haven't seen it beat a quarter for a very long time. So you got Google, Microsoft, Snapchat, and Texas Instruments. Uh, for tomorrow, maybe Google and Microsoft will say something positive that will get the bulls above Friday's channel. But again, we can't anticipate, we can't guess. We're not in the guessing business. We're in the collection of data business. Uh, also, uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA today uh, came out with news. Uh, as we were talking about on uh, the weekend video, we're watching this bottom channel. It got right to the bottom channel here. As you can see, it got right to the bottom channel and they came out with some uh, some PC video game based chip and blah, blah, blah. The stock went higher. We actually had a pivot to the upside. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. But again, we, we talked about this bottom channel here, right? On the weekend video, we continuously talk about this bottom channel because again, if this is a one or two day wonder and this thing starts getting below this bottom channel, it's gonna be in trouble. So again, you have to know your level. So going into tomorrow, there are a couple of names that are watching for potential dead cat bounces. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. But at the same time, we are wary of what's going on. The one name that continues to hold up uh, very, very well is Netflix, right? Netflix has had a good earnings quarter and it's resting. That's a, the longer it sits above the 50 day moving average, the better. And you can see here now, this is day three. And what's good about this move here, this digestion move, it's coming in a, a, a high volume and then a lower high volume and then a lower high volume. Unlike stock price action, you want to see small volume on distribution. That means the sellers are getting comfortable. I have to assume, and again, again, we're just watching, we're just talking out loud, but I have to assume if there is a significant debt cat bounce in all of technology in the next couple of days, Netflix will eventually wake up. So because the fact that it remains, the fact that you're looking to build a base above the 50 day and the sellers are comfortable there, well, the next move up should be higher as well. So it's definitely a name uh, we want to watch. I'm watching for the options market in this thing. I'm assuming by Wednesday, Thursday, if it hasn't sold off and given back the 50 day, it'll probably start to rev up. So I definitely want to keep an eye on Netflix uh, for the next uh, couple of days. Uh, the only, th the only thing uh, that I, I will give the bulls a lot of credit today, this morning, we gapped down a lot, right? We gapped down a lot pre-market. Uh, everything was down. And with the, 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 to the bulls' credit, uh, they woke up, they started taking everything higher, grinded up, came back, tested the 351 level, held, and attempted a dead cat bounce again, only to get rejected back at lower highs. So going into tomorrow, again, be prepared on both sides. If you're not prepared on both sides, you're guessing. If you're guessing, you don't have an edge. If you have, don't have an edge, why trade, right? Why trade? Why put it, your hard-earned money uh, on the table? If you're gonna tra if you're gonna do something with no edge, better baseball game. Go on DraftKings, right? Better baseball game. At least you'll get some uh, DraftKings dollars. That you, you know, you you, you can play for free at, at a certain event. But you know, again, all jokes aside. You never want to enter a financial arena with your hard-earned money without an edge. And if you don't know which way the market's going, that's a problem, right? At least if you don't have an opinion based on technical analysis, which way the market's going, that's a problem. You need to understand the dynamics of the market, why it's going uh, up macro, why it's going down macro, why it's going sideways, why it's negating good news, why it's negating bad news. When you get all that information, I promise you that's going to translate into making better, smarter, more fiscally sound decisions in your trading, and you'll see it uh, on your ledger. So let's talk about uh, the channels today. Uh, you only needed one, right? You only needed one. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, we had, a, you know, so it was actually a pretty good solid day. Uh, a lot of things is not going to show up on the Twitter feed because a lot of things we had uh, rejection plays, we had bounce plays. Um, so really good, you know, an overall pretty good uh, organic day. So I was watching Oracle, uh, $100.66 level if it builds below could flush. Never got there. Uh, AMAT we talked about on the video. Not a big move, but AMAT 133 held three times if it builds below can flush. Uh, only went down like a dollar and change in the morning. You can see it lost this level here when everything started rallying. It started waking up. But again, another example of, again, even though it attempted a dead cat bounce, it was only up 11 cents in the day, you can see another lower high from Friday's channels. Again, not a good thing. This is kind of the whole point. 
Uh, NVIDIA got down to that 309, 409.80s level, held and had a really, really impressive rally. Guys, I am still watching. Is it possible NVIDIA has a you know a, another update tomorrow? Yeah, but it's possible, right? Of course, it's possible. I'm actually watching it uh, for another uh, move down. But I'm telling you, if this thing gets down to the bottom channel, folks, set an alert. Because if it gets down to the bottom channel, we'll see, right? We shall see, said the blind man. Uh, Lamb Research, we've been talking about this for a couple of days. Inside day on Friday after earnings miss, 598 if it builds below, can flush, can see in the 480s. Uh, that's kind of what it did, right? That's kind of what it did here. So uh, LRCX took out that 598, traded down to the 480s, 489, but still, hey, got to the 480s. Uh, only again, and you can see again, another example of a lower high from the previous day's range. Again, bulls, you got it. Get your foot out of your tush to, to start waking up or else, again, the longer we start building the supply, not going to be good. Uh, this is definitely the trade of the day uh, for me, for a lot of you guys. And this is what we joked around in, in the webinar today. He said, hey, this is, you know, it's nice to have a five minute workday. Uh, Tesla lost the 21040. And then lost the pre-market lows of 208, and we literally covered about a dollar, you know, dollar and change uh, right from the lows. Uh, you know, w w stock got down to like 202 at, at 203 and change. I was like, yo, this is too big of a candle. We got to take it off, and and somehow that correlated with that 351 bounce on the queue. So it worked out really well. Great, great job on Tesla again. A lot of really ugly uh, put buying still coming into the stock in November 185s, 180s, and 190s. Uh, AMD that again still looks lower 10140 if it builds below can flush here was uh, AMD right flush down went all the way down to 99 again guys watch that 200 day moving average for the next couple of days uh, for potential more and Nvidia right Nvidia so here was the pivot on Nvidia Nvidia needs a new base uh, 24 425 426 for potential 428 430 push right again we're watching it to the downside. Never confirmed, so yada, yada, yada. Look what the stock does, right? You don't need, again, you don't need to fall in love. You don't need to fall in love with the stock. Fall in love with the channel. Again, took out the 425, 426 level, and it traded right to 430. So great, great job uh, for all you guys who caught that as well. So that's it, guys. So again, these are the facts. I don't want to bring be the, 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 you know, the person that brings bad news, but if you are a perma bull, guys, is again, lower highs and lower lows is not a good thing. Watch that 351 level, guys, in the future, because again, if that thing falls and we close below 351, it's going to get very, very dicey. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.